but sometimes I am so sleep deprived that I have to think what I'm gonna say to speak and I'll, there you go. <laughs> you see, that is what I do. Sometimes I'll, I'll <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I think this is time to finally address this question. I know there's no sick edits. I know I look like shit. We have just finished working out, but I just feel that now is the right time. I've been putting off doing this video for ages now, so why not just do it, okay? But let's address the question. Why I don't sleep? How much do I sleep? The negative impacts, the scientific literature, and my own personal experiences with lack of sleep. So if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get going. Now, I'm not putting this video out firstly to say, oh, I'm so hardcore, I don't sleep. I'm just addressing this question. No, I don't sleep, okay? If you've seen from my social media, you'll see that I average roughly four to five hours sleep per day and sometimes even dive down as low as three hours sleep, okay? I'll probably put a summary of my Fitbit like the last two or three weeks, but you can see that my average is like four and a half hours. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Am I blocking your way or anything? No, no, you're right. no yeah, I'm yeah. Come on, Okay. <laughs> I do actually sort of range between that three to five hour sleep per day, okay? And it's not exactly healthy. And if there's one thing that annoys me the most is that you see all these videos on YouTube. Oh, I wake up at like 5 a.m. It's changed my life. Oh, hashtag put in the grind. You know, waking up at 5 a.m. That's what entrepreneurs do, right? Guys, you're going to bed at 10 o'clock, you're waking up at 5, that's 7 hours sleep. Whoa, great, that's a sleep-in for me and for many other people out there. Try sleeping 3 to 4 hours per day. That is the true grind. <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, let's start off with my history of how this all started, okay? It pretty much started back when I was transitioning from school into college, you know, where I was starting up all my social media platforms. I started creating content. I even set up my own little online coaching business, of course, while having a part-time job while doing college, okay? And you will soon realize that it, what's that? One, two, three, four things. You'll soon realize that when you take on such a vast amount of workload, uh, that something has to suffer. And in my case, and many other people's cases out there, that is usually sleep, okay? The only way to get assignments done, to show up to work on time, to keep up with all my social media, to do check-ins and stuff, was to sacrifice sleep, okay? And I was willing to do so, okay? A lot of you think that I am crazy, that I'm willing to put work over sleep, but guys, I'm not gonna turn this into a huge motivational talk, but I'm f***ing hungry for this, okay? And as corny as it sounds, I'm willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to be successful, okay? You will soon realize, don't believe all this fucking shit out on Instagram or on social media and that you do not just set up a coaching business or put out a book and just make it. No, okay? You have to put in consistent work to provide quality content and that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, okay? So don't believe all this shit out there. You won't just make it straight away when you set up like an Instagram page and get to your first 10,000 followers. No, it takes a lot more than that, I'm afraid. God, this video is gonna end up so mumbo jumbo, but hopefully I'll be able to edit it accordingly. So anyway, where was I? So it never used to be this bad. When I started off, I would still get my sort of five to six hours sleep per day, but it soon sort of snowballed, get progressively worse. As I sort of realized, okay, I can still sort of maintain my functioning <laughs> on this amount of sleep. So why not keep pushing the boundaries? And one fear that I do have now is that I've gotten to the stage where I've already tapered down from five to six hours of sleep per day to three to four hours. And I'm probably just gonna end up not sleeping at all. But yeah, it has been about four to five years ever since I started college where I've only really been sleeping three to five hours per day. So I will go to bed at maybe two or three, sometimes even later in the morning and get up maybe six to eight, okay? Of course that amount isn't sustainable long-term and you will see that I do have like one or two crash days where I will just accumulate like eight to even 10 hours sleep per day. But usually five to six days per week will be within that three to five hour range. And this is in no way healthy okay ideally if you can sleep then please do it for me sleep god damn it and that brings me nicely onto the next point okay what are the negative impacts of sleep deprivation if any well yes there's a ton to be honest what are the negative impacts and what have i experienced so let's start off with the scientific literature like i've said i've done my research for you all because i'm all about providing that their value <laughs> 
So first of all, for those unaware, I'm sure you've probably seen it pop up on all these like health websites, but overall, a lack of sleep will naturally cause things like irritability, cognitive impairment, memory lapses or loss, an impaired immune system, chronic fatigue, increased reaction times, aches, pains, suppression of all these hormones, which I'll go into later, increased anxiety, rate of perceived exertion, inflammation, all of that jazz. So you know not sleeping is in no way beneficial. So they are the basics, and I thought now I would just touch upon some of the things that you may not have considered and how they relate to overall sporting performance and hashtag gains because after all this is sort of a fitness channel as well. So I thought I would start off with hormones and in particular leptin or your fat burning energy expenditure hormone and ghrelin your hunger hormone okay so there was one study by Tahiri et al 2004 I know I already butchered that name who studied the effects of reducing sleep from eight to five hours concluding that on average reducing sleep was associated with a 15.5 percent decrease in leptin that fat burning hormone along with i think it's a 14 percent increase in ghrelin your hunger hormone so you can see in the graphs that leptin is low with sleep times of six hours as opposed to nine and in terms of ghrelin they drop as sleep time increases so that's a good thing from a hunger perspective you want ghrelin to be nice and low so you're not walking around hungry all the time and this is confirmed in another study by spiegel et al 2004 who got healthy men to either sleep 10 hours per day for two days or sleep four hours per day for two days, concluding that sleep restriction was associated with an 18% average reduction in the anorexic hormone leptin and a 28% increase in the orexic hormone ghrelin, along with reporting a 24% increase in hunger and 23% increase in appetite, especially for calorie dense foods with high carbohydrate content. But again, you can pause it if you want to see. I'll probably put the graphs all up here. You can see the stats for leptin, ghrelin, appetite, and hunger, all of which are in no way benefited by sleep depth deprivation and although not directly linked to leptin and ghrelin I thought I would still include this paper in that Spiegel also did a previous study in 1999 on sleep deprivation and metabolism showing that a reduction in sleep to four hours per night for six consecutive days led to a 40% slower glucose clearance as a result of an impaired insulin response to glucose furthermore glucose effectiveness which quantifies the ability of glucose to mediate its own disposal independently of insulin was 30% lower in the sleep depth condition than after the sleep recovery condition hopefully again you can see those in the graphs or whatever if not then try to pause and zoom in if you really want to see but also in this study sleep deprivation led to a significantly higher so p is less than 0.01 very significant cortisol levels and a six times six times guys slower rate of cortisol clearance so again you can see in the graphs that salivary cortisol is way higher in the group sleeping only four hours as opposed to the group sleeping eight and 12 hours per day so that's leptin ghrelin cortisol all and glucose tolerance banged out the way <laughs> But essentially, not sleeping will make you lazier through a reduction in leptin, hungrier through an increase in ghrelin, and of course, cause you to squirt cortisol, the stress hormone, all over your body and be less tolerant to carbohydrates or glucose. So they are in no way beneficial and already probably enough on their own to justify recommending you to sleep as much as possible to maximize these hormones. So next, let's touch on the anabolic hormones, testosterone growth hormone and IGF-1. Does sleep deprivation have any effect on anabolic hormone concentrations of course it does so according to go and tong again i've butchered that name 2010 men with acute sleep restrictions so those who sleep four hours daily and even those with moderate amounts of sleep so those who sleep between four and six hours daily had significantly lower androgen concentrations so testosterone and free testosterone by 35 and 14 percent respectively when compared to corresponding concentrations in men who slept more than eight hours per day then when it comes to growth hormone and igf1 in animal studies Everton et al. 2004 showed that growth hormone concentrations decreased by 71% after just one week of sleep deprivation along with a significant decrease in plasma IGF-1 concentrations as well. So again you can clearly see these in the graphs in the bar charts you can see that at baseline they're sort of nice and high and then after one week or even four days in the IGF-1 graph you can see a huge drop on that bar chart okay. So anabolic hormones take a massive hit none of which are going to be beneficial for 
gains or performance. And that brings me on to my next point in that what consequences does sleep deprivation have on losing fat, gaining muscle, performing well in the gym? Because again, this is a fitness channel. Well, Riley et al. 1994 showed that although there were no significant effects on sleep loss and performance on the things like bicep curls, there was in fact a significant effect noted on max bench press, leg press, and deadlifts. With another study by Cook et al. 2012 who showed sleep deprivation to have a huge impact on overall load or volume per workout. So again, you can see it in the graph that there's a significant drop in the bar chart between the group who are sleep deprived and the group who are not, which interestingly enough can be restored with caffeine ingestion. So you can see the sleep deprived group with no caffeine is still very, very low on that bar chart. But when sleep deprived with caffeine, it sort of increases again and sort of restores things a little more back to baseline. So that has some practical implications in that. If you really, for some reason, have to sacrifice sleep, caffeine might help in moderation. Again, caffeine is a whole topic for a different video. But speaking of caffeine, we do have a nice little can of FitFam juice here. So let's open this bad boy up because, oh my God, I have a long day ahead. God, this is such a bad example. Oh my God, man. Uh. Every time, Monster, if you want to sponsor a potato, I'll gladly accept it. So, summary for performance. It seems that exercises like bicep curls or isolation exercises don't really take a hit, but compound movements involving a large amount of muscle mass do, okay? As we know that compound lifts are crucial for making gains, it is in no way beneficial to be sleep deprived. And also, one could speculate that when coupled with all of the aforementioned basic negative effects of sleep deprivation, such as increased fatigue, cognitive impairment, increased RPE, all of that shit, one would speculate that by trying to go in and still train compound movements in a sleep deprived state, one would be at a greater risk of injury because they are all very technical movements requiring a lot of concentration, which in a sleep deprived state, you do not have. Furthermore, along with a reduction in performance on compound lifts, overall workout volume is reduced, okay? But that, of course, can be restored with a bit of caffeine ingestion. But overall, it is safe to say that sleep deprivation is in no way beneficial for performance. So that is performance out the way. <sighs> Now, when it comes to directly making gains and or losing fat, there is also a lot of interesting evidence out there. One study in particular by, oh, completely butchered this name, Nedel Chefa et al, who showed pretty interesting findings in that although a 14 day calorie restricted diet caused similar reductions in body mass in people who slept either five and a half or eight hours sleep, the decrease in fat mass was 55% lower and the loss of muscle mass was 60% higher in the sleep restricted group, suggesting that the hormone secretion may promote different effects of modulating body composition and that skeletal muscle can actually be impaired during a fat loss period. So there you go, an actual study that proves that sleep deprivation causes you to lose less fat and lose more muscle in a calorie deficit, okay? And another study by Datillo et al. 2011, they pretty much summarize everything. Again, I'll link all of these papers down below, but they state something very beneficial to us regardless of gaining muscle on a bulk or trying to maintain muscle on a cut in that the increase in cortisol and decrease in anabolic hormones caused by sleep deprivation promote muscle atrophy and decreased recovery just as a result of increased overall catabolism and reduced muscle protein synthesis. So again you can see in the picture that with sleep deprivation comes a significant suppression of the anabolic hormones testosterone GH IGF-1 which inhibit protein synthesis but as a result of an increase in catabolic hormones such as myostatin and glutocorticoids or cortisol in this case there is an increase in protein degradation which as a result Result will cause an increase in muscle atrophy and just preventing you from recovering from your training overall which is in no way beneficial for hypertrophy fat loss making gains whatever so that is pretty much all I wanted to touch upon in terms of the scientific literature and now I thought I would just finish with a few practical examples of what I have personally experienced with sleep deprivation and then finish off this video once and for all because I've probably already bored the living shit out of you so here we go, my personal experiences with sleep deprivation, okay? Although, of course, I do experience like chronic fatigue on a daily basis, there are a few interesting ones which I do experience, especially when I dive down in the three to four hour sleep range. And the first one is hunger, okay? Hunger skyrockets through the roof. You know, I'll wake up and although I do have the willpower not to uh, go on a complete binge mode, you know, inside I'm like, holy shit, I look at food completely differently. I would be willing to eat anything, even if I didn't 
didn't like the taste of food just because I am more hungry in general. So that is something I definitely experienced, likely due to that increase in ghrelin, which I touched on earlier. So the next one is actually cognitive impairment. You might be surprised. You'd be like, Scott, you're so smart. No, guys, I actually have a lot of issues when I dive down into the three to four hour range of remembering things and even speaking. You know, sometimes I am so sleep deprived that I have to think what I'm going to say to speak. And I'll, there you go. <laughs> you see, that is what I do. Sometimes I'll... I'll <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, sometimes I'll end up like slurring my sentences or slurring my words because I'm thinking my brain reaction time is not quick enough to think what I actually want to say. <laughs> and I know it's not healthy and in no way beneficial and it does clear once I get my 8 to 10 hour crash day in. But still, yeah, a lot of my days are spent like thinking of what I have to say, slurring my words and forgetting things on a regular basis. That is why I advocate, especially as a student whose brain has to be turned on for learning information and you know going in for exams and stuff to sleep as much as you can especially during exam period now the final one i'm keeping it real with you sex drive is at an all-time low i would sort of be interested to test out my testosterone maybe i could do that in a later video but yeah it's definitely safe to say that down low it probably isn't working as hard as it should be and then in terms of gains, you've seen that I'm a pathetically sized, skinny individual. So all of the increased in cortisol probably has a role in that. Leptin or the energy expenditure of fat burning hormone, that doesn't seem to have any impact on me. Um, I still sort of somehow manage to maintain my habitual training routine every single day, even though sometimes guys, I will wake up in the morning and I will be so fucked. You know, I'll put up posts on Instagram where I do literally arrive to the gym and I sleep in the car after having taken my pre-workout. So I'll take caffeine and I will just sit there and I'll just be like, and wake up like 15 minutes later. But yeah, I still get my workouts done. I hit my usual stip goal, whether that's discipline kicking in or just running on adrenaline, I do not know. But I would like to think just like the food in that I don't go on a complete binge mode, that I am disciplined enough to sort of stick to my habitual routine. And that is sort of why I sort of override those feelings. But chronic fatigue, low sex drive, and the cognitive impairment, that just all sort of happens and I can't really fight against that. So those, are my personal experiences with sleep deprivation. Again, I highly recommend you sleep a minimum of six hours, ideally eight to 10 plus hours per day. If you wanna maximize gains and overall health, there are a ton of more negative impacts which I could have touched on. You know, there's papers out there showing sleep deprivation to have a role on like obesity, type two diabetes, blood pressure, all of that shit, cancer, everything. So please, if you can sleep, but again, I'm all about that grind. So I am willing to sacrifice whatever it takes at the moment when I'm young to make a, a name for myself and become successful in my field. So that is that. Oh my God, I've again bored the living shit out of you. Ah, if you need though, we have a long day ahead. But again, all of that scientific stuff that I referenced in the video it did take me about three hours last night from like 12 till three in the morning. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, go to sleep. <laughs> oh my god, I might actually stay here. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate your support. Stay tuned for the next video. Hope you all have a good day. Boop!